I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're out of save welcome to our channel. Today watching Oshinoko season two episode six. Last episode we were given a pretty decently sized cliffhanger. That in the form of Aqua looking at himself in the mirror, seeing the reflection of his past self. I think he's gonna be okay. I think that the performance is gonna be phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see it. I feel like once I had a chance to step away from last episode, I feel like I was so heavily focused on what good Akane could be for Aqua or was in the past episode and what she could be in the future for him in terms of like a support, someone who's starting to understand a little bit more about what's going on internally for him, that I wasn't really thinking about Akane as a person and her own path and growth and mental health that we have seen through season one into this season and I really my heart goes out to her and I definitely am now now that I'm thinking about it I'm more worried about the fact of like Aqua not reciprocating you know like the fact that um what they went through and what she has kind of come out of that with is this attachment to Aqua as this person that saved her and supported her. And there could be this unhealthy attachment and dependence on him that is not something that I want for her hmm. as a character and her mental health. Like I being coming from that position and then like immediately like attaching onto this person that you view as the person that saved you. Like, yes, of course that you uh, want to help them because they helped you. But if you're not careful, so some boundaries can get crossed and it can, this attachment could end up being really detrimental or unhealthy to her. That's true. That's a good point. I don't know. It sounds really healthy to me, especially the, you know, the, I'll kill with you. Yeah. Yeah. Dreams. Dreams. Goals. goals. You ready? Yeah. Sweet. Is that Princess Saya? I think so. It's like the first episode almost. かつて大きな戦があった。斧が新年と野望を胸に争い続けたが、世界の命運を決める21の刀が。and the duo war starts. I love seeing it from the crowd. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Princess Saya. The fact that we're getting to see it again, it feels so different the second time. Oh yeah. <sighs> the lighting. Cool. <laughs> Whoa. The wires? Oh. <laughs> Look at her eyes! メイトはただの刀ではない。全ての名刀から最強と認められたものは国家を手にする。この日本を盗めるほどの力ね。いいじゃん。<laughs> the animation this episode. Woo. A great direction. Country accent. <laughs> really conveying travel. Mm 
んたら強えなこんなところでつまずいてたら王になんてなれねえだろ<笑>なあ俺たちも仲間にしてくれよ俺のポジションは将軍だ渋谷の鬼どもに追いやられてな奴らはその辺の鬼族とは訳が違う次の目的が決まったな次は渋谷の鬼大使だブレイド Feels like Demon Slayer. <laughs> Okay, like an intermission. So like, are the lights gonna go on and we're gonna hear what people's current thoughts are? The first part is, Blade is the same as the Shinju Cluster and Shibuya Cluster. And that's the same as the two of them. Perfect! Beat him! 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 Beat him, Mel. Kino Yaksha. Hudan, a hera herasta, on Nazuki. She by one my. Oka, Tatakai Takanai. Near the Kurasai. So set up Tatakas. Can suck a side in the company. What they do with eyes in the show. Come on, Mel. Come on. Oh, wow, is this practice? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure fans love that. Just by character, like design, I bet that character is a favorite yeah. of readers. Come on, Mel. I feel like he's my child. I know. Like, yet. Yeah. It's okay. 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 いや別にただの市場テレコンネジコンもものだ。だって君も好きでしょ。ガムシャラにとって。Which sword has the most wear? Great shot. This is the actual show. Yeah. For all he's worth. 爪痕残すもんなんだよ。Look, he looks over at him. Oh no, he's looking at her! <gasps> so he's looking at her and she's like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to ま、適当にやり合えるだろう。刻みに強者感があった。でも彼の演技に強者感はない。なんて他作品に下手な人を使うんだろう。マジで素人に気の生えた程度の演技じゃねえか。マジで消えてくれよ。もうな。何の苦
客がお前の下手だと思ってるぜいいんじゃねえの下手だと思われてもはあそんなアドバイスがあるかよまた作品がダメになったらその下手さをうまく活用すればいいって言ってるんだそんなことできるわけ可能だお前の一番の見せ場はモンメとの対決シーン1ヶ月をどう使うかは自由だけど全体を良くしようとしても焼け石に見せた。フォーカスオンダーワン。一点にすべて注いだ方が、賞賛が高いと思わないか。客に舐められてるってのは、客が油断してる。ああ、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、シェイトおー、I'm seeing Aqua like as character saying that. Oh my god. I'm gonna cry. Wow, her I'm gonna cry. 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 この後の演技に何倍もの意味を汲み取ろうとする。さすならここだ。ここからが俺の一番の見せ場。キャラの心情をしっかり理解して、強く感情を乗せるということが当たり前にできてる。台本をそれっぽく読むだけじゃ。通用しない。黒川みたいに考察したりとかはできねえ。どういう人間なのか What is he feeling? なんとなくしかわかりやしねえ。I love how much he's marking it up though. うう相手に散々やられて。Wow, he's like reading the whole thing. 相手負けて。どうしてそんな。俺みたいにしみったれた顔してんだよ。俺みたいな。He's you? ああそうか。情けなくて。みっともなくて。悔しいのか。<笑>それならすげえよくわかるよ<笑>こいつ悔しいって感情が客席に届くほどのこの1ヶ月をこの1分のために注いだ The sake of the single minute <笑><笑><laughs> Look at <laughs> Holy oh my shit! God! Whoa. <laughs> this is like Kimi no Nawa. Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh. Oh. Okay, that was Oshinoko Season 2, Episode 6. This was for the fans. This episode was for the viewers. You know, you wouldn't... You, with a show that's as narrative heavily as Oshinoko is, you would never like... You would never be like, oh yeah, 
the, the fight sequences are gonna look phenomenal. But here we fuck like it, it, everything about this episode was absolutely Choreo. incredible. The everything. Choreography was great. Holy shit! But the art direction. Oh my gosh! Like obviously, choreography of the fight was great. But can we talk about it that all melt sequence? Starts and ends with the eyes with Oshinoko, as it did for that sequence. Like. I, I don't know what to say. Like, that legitimately blew me away in every facet of my being. That whole sequence, I think what it what it really rings true, and I, I, I don't, I feel like it, it gives me this essence of how Abiko feels in the audience as, like, they're bringing to life the things and emotions that she tried to portray within her manga yeah and within these like and you know not every reader is gonna pick up on every little thing and subtext and, and emotion that she's trying to put into it but this performance was bringing to life something that she was hoping would come across those pages to the reader and what this sequence with melt gives me like i have not read the manga but I would be very intrigued to see if this is portrayed at all in the manga. This, like, art sequence of Melt's internal. I, I think it has to. Like, but like, but to also, some degree. If it didn't, it would literally be talking on that point. Even yeah. More so of, like, we are going to bring to life what we view as the mangaka's love for Melt and what is his emotional state right now and this this growth of his the whole the episode title is growth it's also meta in the sense that it's using aqua's advice to melt to further melt as a character like we only have so much of melt we've only had so much of him <laughs> that you don't have too like a tremendous amount to work with you have the main narrative and plot point of his underwhelming performance and in sweet today and that and you have to try to make something memorable and emotional from that so you downplay it and you, you you're using that fact for a lot of the lull mm -hmm. and then you fucking explode yeah. just like he does with his performance you're lackluster you create that you know that they're gonna underestimate you yeah you know that half of the audience you know, maybe a quarter of them will recognize you from that and or have read that you're in it. And we're like, mm, he wasn't very good yeah. in Sweet today. And they're going to come in here already thinking that you're going to suck. We've been kept that like that as a reminder this entire season so far. The first six episodes, every interaction we've got with Yoriko and Melt, you know, a a like even if it's played up for laughs, mm -hmm. it's just hamming away at that idea of an underperformance from Mel. Mm -hmm. And with that, you know, I have an expectation like, oh yeah, he's going to do good. Or at least he'll do a lot better than he did in Sweet Today. But to go this this far mm -hmm. in an artistic direction is so cool. I think another thing that it really um, took home in this episode is the fact that it's not as much the audience, the random people that are watching that Melt cares about here in terms of showing off his growth. Mm -hmm. There is, we've, we see the face over and over and over again in this episode up close of Yoriko. Mm -hmm. And we see Melt crying, watching himself in Sweet Today, knowing and realizing how much he hindered, like, this, this child, this work of someone else that they had poured their whole heart into and that he had not even put his all, he winged it, yep. which is how he decided to live his life because things were just easily happening for him. And he realized that winging it with things that people, other people really fucking love mm -hmm. does not feel good. Yeah. It doesn't. And being able to show even this ounce of growth, like, obviously, as Aqua kind of brings up, like, it's not like he's doing, like, the best performance ever. It's the fact that it is way, it is better than what they were thinking he was going to do. And it came out as a surprise. And, and once it, you get that wave, 
then they're going to read into everything else you do exactly. after that point. Exactly. Like the idea of if you're going to use this time to try to apply it everywhere, it's it's useless. It's mm -hmm. not going to make that significant of a change. You're just going to be a little less lousy. Yeah. But to focus fully in on one thing. Oh my God. I want to It's just... manipulative in a way. Oh no, for which sure. Which is like, which is, I mean, the fact that like, that's why it's fun, but aren't you, as an actor, aren't you supposed to manipulate the audience? You're supposed to make them believe that you truly feel the way that you do the and best, sway their emotions. My favorite part of this show is how they use psychology advantageously. Like you, you need, and you share that. Like you, not only do you have that through Aqua, but you convey that to other characters so they can look at it that way too. This sequence is so phenomenal. Like it starts with Melt living in like a mob psycho-esque world. Melt kind of reminds me of Teru a, a quite a bit in terms of personality. And <laughs> That's it, funny. He falls into paper and then we get this like, like star crystal mm -hmm. that is the essence of what the performance and what the aspiration he's trying to grab and convey is. And throughout this whole sequence, he's reaching for it and almost getting it but it's just a, a bit too far away from him. It's so extraordinary. You see him practicing time and time again, trying to reach for it and grasp up. His hand turns into just lines that turns back into his eye because it's Oshinoko and eyes. Now he's in space chasing it. God, it's like every time they like really scale in on something to do with an eye. They just fucking go stupid the dumb. The emotion and expression that they convey through the eyes in the show and how they draw them is amazing. Like, even at the beginning of the episode, we get these scribbles within Kana's eyes. Uh -huh. And, great. God damn. This is, like, movie quality production and just gonna casually use it for melt in episode six of Oshinoko is the best way to utilize it, in my opinion. The fact that I have been endeared to a character so much so that I'm like, this is my child. Yeah. Like, don't fuck with him. Like, I'm gonna protect him at all costs. Like, I feel like it takes a bit, a lot of the time, to endear me to a character to that level yeah. that I'm like, protect this character at all costs. Like, I wanna see nothing but the best happen for him. But it has happened so, like, season two has done that yeah. for Melt for me. Just it's amazing. Every time he's on the screen, it's giving me reasons to want to protect him at all costs. Yeah. Speaking of eyes, they did something really cool with Sakuya when he was, like, through his personality, is the polar opposite of his character. He's reenacting the manga to perfection. But, like, the, oh my god. Oh, when his eyes, like, yeah, yeah. they, like, spin around, like, almost like they've gone crazy. It's so neat. I have a feeling that I think the character's name is Monme that he's playing. I have a feeling just based on personality and character design that that's probably one of the favorites of a lot of readers of uh, Tokyo Blade. That makes just sense. Just like the guy in the hood that's kind of like, I don't want to fight you, but then it ends up like going, getting like he's like cracked fighting, yeah. you know, amazing. I. Man, I I had so much expectation for what this would be like because of Oshinoko's method of being able to step outside of even a bird's eye view and portray what animation, adaption, just media all together is. And it's consistently blowing me away. I the Obviously, the end of the episode had the phenomenal art direction and animation sequence, but the actual action of this episode was so nutty. Like, it must have been so difficult to animate. And like, the idea of them like having the wires, of course, on stage is one thing, but the actual camera work is extraordinary. It really feels like camera work. <laughs> yeah. And, like, obviously it's just a production side. Oh my God, it's so good. It's just a production side of things, but like having like the second that you swing a sword and it's like the final blow to another character to like have it almost appear as a one shot that after that the connection is made it flies back up to the screen to convey okay. that like thunder crashing right but it, what it also does is it makes it feel like 
this is a real play that had a camera crew that had like was taping the live production. Yeah. Like you're going to include the set. You're going to include all of the other aspects they have added in to make the show come alive when you're taping this live adaptation of this play. It's it's just nutty. It's so cool. Man, I love seeing so much of it from the audience's perspective too. That's so fascinating. It honestly, like this arc in Oshinoko of this play makes me incredibly happy. As like a grew up theater nerd, especially, I'm like, I want to go see this in real life. Like I, I just want to, I want to go see this show in real life now. <laughs> so they obviously like, honed in on like Yuriko we got a little bit of a Biko like in terms of reaction and perception we didn't see any of Ruby mm -hmm. I imagine we're saving that for Aqua's performance yeah. but do you think we're going to see more of a Biko's reaction to other people's performances like Aqua's or do you think it's going to be more isolated to like a Ruby Aqua moment a a Akane you know mm. I think that it, like, I guess it's more important to have Abiko's reaction to Melt than any of the other characters. I feel like getting the director watching Aqua, getting Ruby watching Aqua, there's other characters that I feel like it's more uh, narratively, like, or even from the viewer's perspective, I would rather see yeah. reacting. at Because I think it would make, not that it would make sense more, but I think that it would add more. Um, yeah, because Abiko reacting to Melt positively when the, we then get to see Yuriko you know and knowing their relationship and their past it, it felt really good to see her reaction to Melt's performance so I feel like there are other characters that I would focus more on in the future for Aqua I think what they've done is like constructed a situation that tells the audience okay every actor on stage is doing phenomenal but there's one that we have to worry about that might not, you know, be up to par. This is showing that that actor is up to par. So you, your mind makes the assumption that everybody else is doing great. Therefore, mm -hmm. you don't need to see that much of a reaction from Abiko. I imagine we'd get something through the performance of Aqua. But I think majority of time would be spent with Ruby and the director. If we get... Abiko again, I feel like it would be more towards Akane's performance of Princess Saya. That's true. And maybe just Aqua and Akane's performance together as a duo. Because, like, one of the main issues we start the series off with is what they did to Princess Saya's character in the, like, and then how we have to change it to how she should be portrayed. And that the fact that this couple should be what the audience wants together instead of Kana's character with Akka's, uh, Aqua's character. Yeah. Man, I love that Melt, like, got through to such a degree, like, a, a point of uh, choreography that you had, like, a Biko being like, I never imagined anybody could be doing this outside of the manga. And he does it. I also love that Kana was like, did you do this? You do this shit, Aqua? Like, are you responsible for this shit? It's, like, it reeks of you. Melt, uh, through Melt, I have come to, like, love Kana more than I already did which i already loved her but seeing how she went from having one little standoff moment with him like oh you're here too to immediately deciding to abandon all of that kind of loathing that she had previously had for him or kind of like looking down on him to be able to actually realize like this guy next to me is really trying like mm -hmm. she's probably the one of the first people within this group that saw and noticed what we're trying to explain to Ryda in the audience. Like, hey, look at that sword that's like basically falling apart because he's practicing so much. Like His hands bloody. She's one of the first bruised. people that probably realizes how much he's genuinely trying to like not bring everyone else down. I mean, he they we got that sequence, this episode of them running and kind of being impressed with how much stamina he has. And he's like, I've been running every day since Sweet since Today Sweet ended. Since Sweet Today ended, yeah. yeah. Um, something else I wanted to bring up is uh, about just fabulous job with showing off the fact that, yeah, someone could be getting everything they want handed to them, but did he look happy in 
any of those scenes we saw. It starts out with this um, scene where he's sitting in a bed and it says that sh- this girl had her way with him. Yeah. And the look on his face, I'm like, like it was un- so uncomfortable, like in, in like kind of heart wrenching, the like look of kind of like emptiness. Mm-hmm. Like, and then we go into all these other sequences where it's just like, it, what has happened like this the fact that like he wasn't enjoying any of this but because of everyone else basically being like you're so lucky I, yeah that I, he he was like oh well i'll just keep doing this i'm lucky i'm pretty people like me this is fun right everyone else is telling me this is fun everyone else is telling me this is a good thing she was a third year senpai i bet everyone at school went like this to him when he, when they found out you know like like we're intentionally phrasing it like had her way with me like yeah and, and everything within melt's life came so easy and came so like oh yep that that makes sense i'm just gonna it, wing it right and like i'm i imagine like within it, within your head you're like okay this is what everybody else wants this is like eliciting such a reaction great but this isn't nearly as exciting or it doesn't give as much fulfillment as like is this all life has to offer you know and, and that's why i'm bringing it up because one of the last lines in this episode is melt to aqua being like this is fun yeah like i'm having fun and just the fact that like he's genuine it's almost like he's genuine genuinely alive right now mm-hmm. and living and like i th- <laughs> you know what's awesome it's like even with melt like laying on the ground finishing his performance and making the expression with his mouth i am probably reading too much into it but i i just love melt's character so much i imagine melt is like i could have done this better this better this better this better and this better but like you can you can have those self critiques and criticisms and feel the holy shit this is fun like you're experiencing what it's like and it just motivates you to want to just improve more Mm -hmm. it's infectious man. right um at that end of his scene when he's laying on the ground and we have that little smile it comes at a kana line that's basically like we'll take it from here yeah. you did great which it's almost like she could be speaking directly to him when she's saying it and so when he smiles there i almost feel like he's taking that like she's she's really actually talking to melt yeah. like kana is talking to melt here and obviously the audience would have no idea but what that then leads me to is like this could be melt's first time making genuine friends yeah like genuine people that he can be honest with and vulnerable with and that aren't gonna just give him and hand him everything he wants and are gonna actually critique him you need it's it's very cool and easy to have relationships with people that all they see is the the person that you've built up for them to see but when you build relationships with people, when they can see how much work you are putting up and putting in to make that person and see the faults behind it and see the flaws and struggles behind it, that's what breeds true friends. And mm-hmm. that's what has happened. And I think he's realized to a pre, I think he's come to love himself more through reading Tokyo Blade. Yeah. Through real, like really getting to read the character that he's supposed to be portraying here. He, obviously, we saw that scene where he had a stack of the manga and he's really trying to read it because he's like, oh, everyone else has such a good understanding yeah. of their characters. And he's like, oh, and Akane's over there talking about like, what is Princess Saya feeling? And I'm like, oh my God, what's my character feeling? And he's sitting there and he's like, this guy is lame. This guy is weak. And then he starts to think about it more and he's like, he's, he's why is he giving this expression that looks so much like me? frustrated Mm -hmm. and it's like i think through i mean isn't that what happens sometimes when you end up connecting to a character they're like oh that's like me like i relate to this character i think that in some ways you can come to appreciate things about yourself more uh than you ever did before like when i first watched i'm not gonna say it because then it's a spoiler never mind uh when i first watched a show when i was a kid there was a main character that i absolutely loved And I was like, this person's the best person ever. I absolutely love this character. And then when I got older, Mm because I'd watched it as a kid, when I got older, I was like, oh my God. Like a lot of that stuff that that character did was like 
it was thankless and it was amazing and they were a great character, but I was, I was relating to them and I wasn't even realizing that like, I was putting them on this, this pedestal for doing this behavior that maybe lacks like healthy boundaries hmm, or like I was relate, I was realizing things about myself, um, both that I wanted to work on, but also that were positive things about me that other people could possibly take advantage of. Like if someone is a very kind and loving and giving person that will constantly try to people please and do whatever someone wants, that can often be taken advantage of. So you need to be able as an adult to then like set healthy boundaries. Mm. But it's it's so cool how like watching things can like help you realize things about yourself, but also appreciate yourself a lot more. I really hope that everything ends positively with this performance for Aqua. Like I have like some devil on my shoulder being like, since it was so amazing and ended so well for Mel. And like, obviously like overall, if you have critics like analyzing Melt's performance, it'll be like mainly lackluster, but this portion was great. I understand that. But like narratively having such a win through Melt, I'm somewhat anxious of there not being one through Aqua, even though I trust that there would be one. There has to be. I mean, like, yes, Melt has worked really hard, but Aqua's been, uh, and, and Melt's been like going into like physical training. He's been doing a lot of like making sure he's pouring everything into this one scene and Aqua kind of has to do the same thing. Like the one scene where we see in the opening, you know, where like Princess Saya, like he has her in his lap, like Aqua has to emotionally act and dig into some emotions that are going to be crazy to see portrayed on the screen. Yep. All right. That's all I have you. Yep. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.